and I think we will get started pretty soon with their brilliant band tunes. I'm just delighted that they're here. I think it, it is a wonderful gift. And right now, I would uh, let's do a shout out. Yay, Ed and Risa! Ra, ra, ra! Ra, ra, ra! <laughs> For all the years of music they have brought to this event. I told Ed one day, I would like to close with some music. Do you know anybody who would do it? And he said, I would. And since then, either he or Risa or both of them have been giving us wonderful concerts. We are so blessed. And the name of their program this afternoon, and they have their amazing, talented boys, Jude and Clint, with them. So this is going to be good. And I don't know if, can, is there some way I can put them on the whole screen? All right, I think, I think, I think we're on. Yeah. Okay, well, welcome everybody. Thank you everybody for having us. Thank you, Dr. Thank you, Dr. K. Thank you, Paulette, for having us every year. We always love coming out and celebrating banned books and um, independent th thinking, especially now, but always. Um, I'm Risa, and my husband, Ed, are you on screen? I'm yeah. here. And um, our two boys are joining us for the first time ever this year. So Jude is going to start us off on guitar. Ed's going to be on bass. I'll be on uke. And Clint is on the keys, which let's see if I can show you. See? Um, hopefully I didn't mess up the camera too much. There we go. All right. So we have, um, we have three songs to share with you today. And uh, this first song um, <clears throat> is by Peter, Paul, and Mary. And um, it's from their children's album, Moving, and it's called Puff the Magic Dragon. And um, this song was banned in Hong Kong and Singapore because it was interpreted as a song about um, drug use and marijuana. People thought Puff the Magic Dragon was code for um, take a smoke of a, a marijuana cigarette. Um, Peter Yarrow insists that um, this is the story behind the song. Peter Yarrow, who is Peter in Peter, Paul, and Mary. Uh, no. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Peter Yarrow. Um, he went to Cornell University, and um, one of his roommates was friends with Lenny Lipton, who, um, as it turns out, Leonard Lipton uh, was an engineer, and um, they invited Lenny over for dinner one night, and um, there was a mix-up about the time. So Lenny got there, and nobody was there yet. And before he had arrived for dinner, he had been um, reading some poetry, and uh, he was inspired himself. And he was inspired to write this poem uh, about a dragon. And uh, it was Puff the Magic Dragon. And he wrote this poem on a typewriter, because there was a typewriter there. And then he forgot about it and left it there. And they had dinner. And then he left. And later, Peter found this poem in the typewriter and loved it and decided to turn it into a song. And sang this song for a long time, then joined Peter, Paul, and Mary. And they started singing this song, and it became a hit. And so Peter Yarrow tracked down Lenny Lipton to say, hey, I, I turned your poem into a song. And Lenny was like, what poem? And he, to this day, still gets royalties from this song as the creator. Both Lenny Lipton and Peter Yarrow insist this is really just a song about lost innocence. And um, uh, in, uh, at the Sydney Opera House, um, Paul Stuckey, who was Paul in Peter, Paul, and Mary, once did a fun little shtick where he put this song on trial. He put Puff the Magic Dragon on trial. And uh, the audience weighed in by singing along, and everyone sing along. So, case dismissed. Just a song of innocence. So, this is Pop the Magic Dragon. Thanks. 
start us off. Yeah. books but since we're all kind of learning the songs as we go um i decided to do redo Julie, really? i decided to redo this one because it's a it's a classic yeah. it's called louie louie and it's also got one of the more 
controversial uh, or, or kind of funny kind of uh, band stories behind it. And uh, it's a song that was originally written well before the, the controversial version. It was written in the 50s by Richard Berry. Not Chuck Berry, but Richard Berry. Can you give me a pick from over there? And, um, Richard Berry is uh, the guy who wrote Louie Louie. But, um, but the version that became a controversial was the version by the band The Kingsmen, who recorded it in 1963. And when it first came out in 1963, this version, uh, it didn't get a lot of attention initially. Uh, and what happened was uh, a Boston DJ heard this recording by this band. And at that time, this was before punk rock. This was before, but it was sort of one of the precursors to the punk sound in a certain way, because it was very sloppy. It was a trashy garage band sounding song. The lyrics were unintelligible, um, and uh, it just sounded really sloppy, and this DJ in Boston thought it sounded really so sloppy, uh, and he loved it for that, and he had, a, he had a thing he played every week called Worst Record of the Week, and so he played this on Worst Record of the Week, that part of a show. Can you all hear me? Okay? Yes. Okay. And uh, so he played it. And it became a hit. People, instead of thinking it was a terrible record, thought it was this really amazing recording. And uh, it's funny because the story behind it is when the band, when they were preparing to record it the night before, they went to kind of a teen rock club and they played a 90 minute version of this song. What? And, uh, and everybody loved it and they went crazy for 90 minutes on this one song. And then they went to the studio and they recorded it and the lead singer had to stand on his tiptoes in the studio to kind of reach up to the boom mic that was over his head. And he also had braces and his pronunciation was really bad because he was screaming with these braces on with his head up. And that's what created this really famous unintelligible sound that uh, the lyrics are really, really hard to understand if you've listened to the Kingsman version of this song. And what happened was a rumor started going around that the reason the lyrics were in unintelligible is he was totally changing the original lyrics and making it this horrible story about the uh, about uh, sexual things going on between the sailor and the song, and also uh, the uh, you know the woman that he's singing about. That that's in fact not what happened. But it got so controversial that the governor of Indiana banned the song in Indiana. And, uh, and then what happened was uh, the FBI opened an investigation into whether or not they were secretly saying all kinds of horrible things. Uh, and they determined that they could not distinguish what was being said in the lyrics, so the investigation was inconclusive. And uh, ultimately down the road, the drummer admitted that there was a bit of profanity in the song and it, it, when he was doing a drum roll at one point, he accidentally dropped an F-bomb, but you can barely understand it. It's in the, uh, it's in the uh, 54 second mark of the song if you listen to it. Anyway, um, it's gonna be an A, right? A, is that where we play, play? It an a? a? So without further ado, Louie Louie. And I'll be back, so screaming it from the back here, and it'll be pretty unintelligible. So <laughs> I'll be screaming it from the back here, and it'll be pretty unintelligible. You need to let him see. No, I mean, I can I can see. I just can't oh. see. Because yeah. Okay. Stop okay. covering me. Okay. No, it's okay, guys. It's about it's as unintelligible as a rap song. Why don't you see about you? And Judy, you plugged so in. So pretty unintelligible. Hey, let's plug you in, Judy. I don't think you plugged in yet, right? Oh, Please be careful. With Hold that. on. Okay. Kid politics going on over here. Sorry. And also uh, tech difficulties. Well, you're going to have to wait until I'm ready. Here, come on, Cal. Need help? Need help? Let me see. Here, let go. There you go. All right, we're all good. Okay. All right. Okay. You ready? When you are. Wait, it's. Dun, dun, dun. Oh, <laughs> 
lyrics at all. I was trying to scream over the instruments, but... Uh, wait, wait. I can't I scream as loud as you. Anyway, so the next is uh, we're going to play uh, My Generation by The Who. And My Generation by The Who, and Clint will be singing, the, playing the keys and singing My Generation on this one. And uh, this song came out in 1965. And like many, 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 that's enough. And like many, 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 many uh, 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 of the BBC songs out there, uh, I mean, many of the songs that came out in the 60s, the BBC was banning it. The BBC has always been big on banning songs. It's like they're very, very famous for banning some of the best songs ever. And it banned my generation because Roger Daltrey, or they, this is the reason they said they ban it. Uh, Roger Daltrey in the song stutters on purpose for an effect. He says, people try to put us d -d 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 down. That's what he's uh, famous for doing on the lyrics. That happened because he accidentally stuttered in the recording the first time, and they liked the sound of it. So they kept it. And um, the BBC said they felt the song was insensitive to people who stutter, and so they banned the song. Although it makes them sound pretty cool, actually. And, and yeah, it, it actually sounds very cool to stutter in the song. I can't um, see your head again. Sorry? You can't see your head. Oh, sorry. 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 So. See your camera is uh, this side, right? You yeah, see? can you hear me? I yeah. hear you wonderfully, but I just can't see your head. The camera is towards your right. All right. Okay. Well, can you see me now? Yeah, Am I there? Down, I can see. I'm, no, I okay. can't see Clint. Okay, but I, I'm, I'm just telling the story, and then I'll get up and we'll move. And okay. We'll be good. Okay? So, uh, so in 65, the BBC banned the song, and uh, they banned it because uh, they said the stuttering was disrespectful to stuttering people. And, uh, but I suspect, because I've seen Quadrophenia, the movie that The Who made, about sort of about that time when that song came out. And there's a scene in that movie where all these kids are dancing to it at a, at a party. And when they get to the why don't you all f -f 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 fade away part, everybody in the room screams F off. They scream the, uh, you know, they, they drop an F bomb. Uh, so I have a feeling that everybody suspected that that, that F was going to end up spelling out a really bad word in the recording. Well, anyway, the, uh, so the BBC didn't play it, but then that, the, the record sold like 300,000 copies really fast and all these other radio stations started playing it. And uh, so the BBC dropped its band and brought it back. And uh, so that band wasn't very long lasting. Anyway, without further ado, we will now play My Generation. And so can we get Clint's head back? It'll oh, come yeah. back, don't it'll, worry, it'll don't come worry. back. He's right front and center, you'll see him. And I'm gonna move this so you guys aren't tempted to look that way, because that's better. Yeah. Jude, watch the head stop. You're close to me. Um, should I play through octaves or just one? People try to put us down. We got my generation. Why don't you all just fade away? Oh, 
smash our instruments like yeah. we do. Okay. <laughs> All right, well, um, we just want to thank uh, Dr. K and the whole committee for um, allowing us to join you all in your living room, dining room, bedroom, wherever you happen to be. And we look forward to a time when we can all be together to celebrate band books and also band songs. Thank you again for the opportunity. Well, thank you. That was pretty marvelous. Thank you. <laughs> Fun. Good job. Does anybody have any questions for our musicians? I want to thank the uh, Fun family. Thank you, Jude. Thank you, Clint. And thank you, Ed and uh, Riza. Wonderful presentation. I had a ball. Thank you. Enjoyed. Thanks. You're welcome. Thank you so much for having us. It was super fun. Thank you, everybody. This was a lot of fun. It's lovely as usual. We had a lot of comments coming on YouTube as you guys were performing. So it's there in the Zoom chat. I've copy pasted it. So please do look at it. Well, that's awesome. really good. I'm really glad. Check. Really. <laughs> Thank you. It's Thank important you. to end our event on a high note. And... You guys always bring a lot of spirit and joy, and the music is just a great way 